We're here to give you the latest of what's happening in and around the country. The weekend is here and of course, yay, we are in a Friday. And what does that mean on Friday? We have the Media Roundtable wrapping up what the day, I mean, what the week looks like, not just the day. It's just what the look, uh, week looks like and we do welcome you right here. Um, today, just before we tell you uh, about some of the things that are going to happen, let me first let you in on what is on the Nile Post because part of the news is uh, for palpitations this morning, very high palpitations. <laughs> Coming through, let's take a look at some of the stories covered. Uh, on the Nile Post, of course, yesterday was Liberation Day, so NRA urges parents to bring kids in holidays to get their national IDs. Sincerely, the holiday is left with about one week. But yeah, it is also a good, um, it's also a good thing, but also other holidays, yes. Uh, remember, even when your child, your child from 0 to 18, I mean to 17, they can have their, um, you know, bio data taken and they are given a national identification number. They're not supposed to own an ID until they're 18. Uh, someone will tell, uh, tell you that some kids have their IDs even when they're not 18. I don't want to get into that discussion, but what I know is that a child between 0 to 17 uh, gets registered and gets their NIN, their national identification number. And then when they turn 18, they're able to get their national ID. So please go ahead and register uh, your children during the national holidays. And uh, sickle cell trait surge worries Busoga medics. Now, ladies and gentlemen, and especially people who are planning to walk down the aisle, people who are planning on getting married this week, uh, I mean this year, while you think about doing a HIV test, an HIV test, please think about sickle cell. You could both be sicklers, you and your intended spouse, and you will end up suffering in the future. Because if you both are sicklers, there is going to be a very likely and high chance that you will give birth to a sickler. So please, these are health aspects that we need to all pay attention to. Hepatitis B, sickle cell, HIV, and uh, so many other diseases. So please, let not love blind you. Think wider than you have to be thinking, other than just walking down the Ayo, Kwambala, Gomesi, and all those things. You need to be thinking about the future and what it holds. Okay, that is a story you also want to pay attention to. Uh, in Busoga, it's on the rise, and uh, it's a very uh, um, unfortunate thing to be able to look at. Over 150 children taken off the streets in Kampala. Uh, this is a continuous exercise. We keep having them taken off, and then they come back. There are push and pull factors that get uh, children onto the streets. I remember one time the Minister of Youth and Children Affairs uh, threatened that whoever gives these kids money, you will be arrested because that's one of the pull factors. And you know, there's been allegations of persons who use street kids for money purposes. So they literally have like a gang of them. Go collect all the money that you can be able to collect and bring it back. But that's child labor. But also just human rights abuse. How do you make someone a slave by merely begging? But anyway, this is a story that you also want to pay attention to on the Nile Post. A little bit more. There is just a lot more for you to pay attention to. www.nilepost.co.ug is where you will be getting the link and uh, getting your most accurate news fast. There is nothing two ways about uh, thinking about what would be happening on the Nile Post. But away from there, yeah, Katubas Tulemu Kemitima. Palpitations now. PLE exams are going to be released today. I know you knew, but probably for any parents that had, um, it had skipped your mind, you totally forgotten that it was going to be um, happening, please do not forget once again, primary living examinations for the... Um, for the year 2022 will be coming out today. You know, we'll get back to those rhetorics of boys versus girls. But I would really, really want to see the performance with regard to the fact that this was the first, um, away from, you know, the, the exams that were sat immediately after the COVID lockdown, uh, where we'd just come out and especially looking at the students who were candidates at that particular point in time. Now, this one is for those after, you know, school had normalized, uh, there is no more lockdowns and all that. What is the performance? Because I know many students would have loved to move classes ahead, but uh, that was not allowed by the Ministry of Education. And I know that there are some schools also that did not allow that. So how do we get to gauge the performance? And remembering well that this is also the first primary living exam 
where we are having um, students sit with the blended. What was it called a blended? The new curriculum, you know? Um, that was a little bit switched and changed here and there uh, to encompass a number of things that would be covered in quite a short period of time, but also to encompass a number of things that are now relevant. I wish that we are going to scrap things like Canadian prairies, uh, Rift Valley Authority, because are they still relevant anyway? In this day and age in the digital era, Devonshire white paper. I <laughs> okay. 19 hour of Uganda agreement could be um, very important because it applies to the context in which we are. And it's upon that agreement that a number of things happened, you know, the way land is owned, the land tenure system in Uganda, where you have Milo land, you have Kabaka's land, you have, um, you know, freehold land, and all those aspects. Probably then that would make us understand the history of the land tenure system in Uganda. Now, people share white paper. Do we still require that? I am just thinking out loud. There are some things that really need to be taken out of the curriculum for good, for Swiss Alps, for good. Take it out. I mean, yes, if they still do exact koi koi migration, does it still apply in this day and age? But anyway, the education can be able to determine. And the person who is reminding me all that, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, while I'd forgotten is my producer. That is how crisp her memory is of her. That was most of the things she mentioned, history, you know, and geography coming right there. But, uh, well, PLE results will be coming. Remember, there is a lot of digital transformation in the release of the exams. You can be able to use a, a hashtag. Um, no, it's called a USSD to be able to get those. And, of course, the ministry will be... Um, will be telling us which USSD we'll be paying attention to. But also, you can be able to, um, um, if my producer will remind me, I'll be able to give you that uh, USD, USSD. If you have, but of course you're supposed to have your child's registration number. You're supposed to be able to remember your child's registration number. If you don't, there is a problem particularly. So, um, but also students, back in the day when exams were released, we would get to have, um, we would get to have teachers flock uh, the UNEB offices. But now when UNEB releases the exams, it simply uh, directs the teachers to go and get to the, um, uh, to go and get to, uh, to, to their website and then they are able at that point in time to get these exams particularly. Okay, um, I want to remember the USSD code here and I'll just be giving it to you in a bit. But that and much more will be coming up much later on. 37th NRM anniversary was yesterday following up on the Liberation Day that did happen on the 26th of January 20. 1986. Why am I thinking in 2000s? 1986. What does that say? Uh, that it's been 37 years of the NRM rule and of course looking back and the theme was basically focusing on the gains that have been achieved that needs to be maintained but also a better future uh, for the country that needs to go on. And while they were um, of course at it in Kakumiro yesterday, the president Ayora Museveni did reaffirm the fight against corruption. Mr. President, you've always talked against corruption. At one point in time, you even told us, you know, these corrupt people, and you said God would be able to punish them. At one point in time, you said you are at least these corrupt people, if they get to, uh, you know, invest the money in the country, that is a little bit better. You know how Mgandak says, Kale Kale Kongo Muvio Mueru? And then also at one point in time you said the lifestyle audit was going to scare away people. Mr. President, would this be referred to as double standard? Would this be referred to as, um, you know, trying to use a carrot and stick approach? I know, yes, uh, the IGG, the State House Anti-Corruption Unit, and all these other units that you've set in place are really trying in as much as possible to fight corruption. But you know, sometimes I ask myself, Looking at the corruption case being investigated, vis-a-vis -vis how much money we are putting to investigate that corruption case. You'll find, for example, um, in the local government, you're investigating about 50 million shillings in corruption and you're using about 100 and something because probably you have to fly choppers, you have to pay allowances. So you find yourself spending more to investigate a little. Not to say that it shouldn't be investigated, but we need to incur all that. Can't we use the local authorities, the police, the DPP, and all these other people to come through sanctioned cases and let them go through the judicial system? Maybe I could be thinking too much, but anyhow.
Let me just get you back a little bit to what happened in Kakumiro yesterday. Kakeka grounds in Kakumiro district were a beehive of activities as government officials, dignitaries, residents of Kakumiro gathered to commemorate 37 years since NRM took over power in Uganda. In his speech, President Yoram Seveni began by sharing his story of the Bush War, highlighting Winyoro's contribution in the liberation struggle. The angry president showed concern over local government officials that exploit female job applicants sexually before they offer them jobs and those involved in extortion in exchange for jobs. He urged residents to play their role in providing evidence for these crimes. I have heard the Mazukuru crying about the district service commissions selling local government jobs. I have heard of girls being exploited sexually as bribes for jobs. Get evidence, please, devoted members of the public, and we expand and roast those pigs. The president also warned forest and swamp encroachers whose acts are threatening climate change to stop or else the effects will be adverse. We need water and clean air. Both of them come from the wetlands and forests. You cannot say that you are a patriot of Uganda, but you damage our, our wetlands, our forests, our riverbanks, our lake shores, our steep gradients on which our livelihood depend. During her speech, the Prime Minister and also the host of this year's celebrations, Robin Anabanja, requested the president to intervene in schools charging high fees because it has become a problem in the region. We have the Commissioner of Anna and the USE and the UPE. Abana have the Commissioner of Anna and the USE and the UPE. We have the Commissioner of Anna and the USE and the UPE. We have the Commissioner of Anna Abana bai tukurugo masomero. Echi onkusaba tuchikuata nizei tuena. Tuchikuata ama hembe. Tuija kuchimarao na mamo ugu. Nkumwesika. Aba kusaba sente masomero kwa government. E sente za government. Aba kusaba ebisari masomero kwa government. Tukazi hao. Omwaki nkumi vili na mnana. Beto wa headmaster abamu. Baka jema. I love that every time the president goes to any part of the country, he, um, he strives to speak the language so that, so that the local persons, because the persons who attend such events are the local people, apart from those who are ferried and those who ferry themselves into such, you know, events. And I'm using ferry in context. I mean, you know, when you get uh, leaders from Kampala, national leaders are going to uh, local places like um, Kakumiro. Well, the, um, he tried to speak both in English, Luganda, and uh, all languages that could be understood. It's interesting that for everyone who attempts to speak Runyoro ends up speaking Rutoro. Because Rutoro's discussion is about having, um, having a crescendo move of your tongue. And Runyoro is straight, you know, very, very straight. And there is no, <laughs> I normally say there is no flavor in Runyoro. <laughs> I hope I'm not rubbing my brothers and sisters in Nyoro <laughs> the wrong way. But anyway, the president was uh, speaking about on um, matters of sexual harassment, especially uh, <clears throat> issues of sex for jobs. You know, we were still talking about sex for max in universities. My God. You need to visit some of these corporate institutions that do not have policies against sexual harassment. And you will see just how people get to suffer. And I do remember this is a conversation. Uh, while the world, while the country was still looking at all the harassment, the extortion that is happening at the Entebbe International Airport, 
I loved when someone came through and said, by the way, while you are still looking there with regards to um, sex for, uh, I mean with regard to extortion, let's now get back to the discussion of sex for jobs that is happening in a number of boardrooms. You know, these are always referred to as carpet interviews, carpet interviews or floor interviews. Very, very absurd. And whoever perpetuates it, I think, deserves to be where the criminals are at that point in time. And also the Prime Minister, of course, was thanking Ugandans and especially the people of Kakumiro, who she represents in Parliament as well, uh, for educating children, utilizing the Uganda uh, universal uh, primary education and the universal secondary education. Mr. President, in 2016, <clears throat> you had promised that after the elections, we were going to have an audit of the primary living examin sorry, not primary living examination, universal primary education and universal secondary education because you had highlighted the aspect of quantity vis-a-vis -vis quality, but also a high school dropout rate. Mr. President, I think we need to have that sort of audit. It, it definitely needs to come through because then it helps you, it helps the government, it helps the policymakers and all of us as Ugandans to be able to ascertain what are the gaps, you know, that we need to be plugging here and there. But anyway, uh, that's a discussion that continues and uh, congratulations. I want to say congratulations to the National Resistance Movement because 37 years, well, now I'm much God bless you in whichever way, but there are a number of things that need to change. This continuous singing of corruption will be fought, corruption will be fought upon. We're doing, we are, uh, we have done a little bit in areas like health and education, but more needs to be done definitely. Not to say entirely nothing, nothing at all has been done, um, but a little bit more needs to be done. 37 years down the road, there is a lot of difference and change that should have come through in those, um, in those areas. But that's a discussion for another day. And of course, it's a dis no, it's a discussion for today, but we'll be extending it to the media roundtable. The National Social Security Fund still taking you back to Parliament. The probe committee or the select committee has been set out. Remember, earlier on, there was a summoning of the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, Honorable Matia Kasaja, together with the Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development, uh, Honorable Anita Am I beg your pardon. Honorable Betty Among. You know, because I was thinking about Among in my head, it's Betty Amongi, not Anita Among. Anita Among is the Speaker of Parliament. Pardon me on that. Confusing Amongi and Among names. But anyway, uh, the Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development did write a lengthy letter. I, I paid attention. It was a 19-page, yes, it was a 19-page letter where she was talking about the decline in performance, she was talking about corruption tendencies, she was talking about um, a lot of things there happening at the National Social Security Fund. And well, Parliament set out a select committee. Now remember, select committees have between um, <clears throat> either 25 to 45 days, um, according to the rules of Parliament, but then the Speaker has the powers to be able to extend that period of time if there is a little bit more work that needs to be done. Now remember this is a matter of national interest. You understand? It is a, an, an issue that affects all the servers. Um, remembering well that this is a forced serving. The security of the money, how it is invested, the performance and all those discussions. Now let me take you back to who the select committee members are going to be. No doubt, of course, uh, the um, Barara uh, City South uh, legislator, that is Honorable Mwine Mpaka, will be chairing this committee. I know someone is about to say, why is it that Honorable Mwine Mpaka is the one who chairs all select committees? He has performed. By the way, I think of some of the chair committee chairs of different committees, Honorable Mwine Mpaka has a straight head. As in, he is not easily swayed by politics, not easily swayed. Um, he does not love to play to the gallery. He wants to stick and make sure that work is done. And I want to say kudos to you, Honorable Mwine Mpaka, for all the work that you have done. I want to believe that people of Marara City are actually very, very proud of you. So he will be chairing this select committee. Uh, others include Mr. Charles Bakabulindi, uh, who represents workers. Mr. Karim Masaba, uh, Industrial Division, that is in Mbale City. We'll have Michael Kakembo from Entebbe Municipality. Fortunate Nantongo from Chotera District. And uh, Laura Kanushu, uh, she represents persons with disabilities. And Mr. Amos Kankunda, Rwampara County uh, Member of Parliament. Among other things, this team is assigned to examine uh, the corporation structure 
of the National Social Security Fund, their aspects of abuse of office, and also evaluating the performance of the National Social Security Fund. So we will be crossing our fingers and waiting for what the deliberations will be, uh, for what the minister's statements will be. And I want to believe that um, as we also go through, we will have now the former managing director up until his former managing director i know yesterday dalton was asking me if richard Biarugaba is still acting is he the the managing director is he the former managing director of course his contract expired and up until it can be renewed he's currently the former managing director and that is why the minister had appointed um the former a deputy managing director to act in the capacity of managing director but also still as uh, the um, the deputy managing director so we'll really need to want uh, to have those discussions and please and please parliament do not think about doing this in camera do not think about kicking out the media when this probe is going on we do request that it will be in full glare of um, of the public through the use of media of course our cameras as next media as nbs television the political command center will be on ground now we'll be taking a very short break and as we do i just want to remind you that you can be able to get us on various platforms you can get us on facebook you can get us on twitter you can get us on all including youtube as well we'll be live right there and above all please Let's get into the digital stage. Download the Afro mobile app onto your phone, uh, whether you're using Android or iOS, whatever it is, you can be able to get us. So simply download that app on your phone and you can be able to watch not only NBS television, but a number of other local media channels, Ugandan media channels, both radio and television. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Feel like a little Waikibenda, bender, no aji on tare? Then open your Afro mobile app, go to options section, select radio, find the station that best suits your current mood, click on it and enjoy live without missing a beat. Take a piece of home with you anywhere and anytime. Afro mobile, the future is now. And Martin Chakoto spills the ball and just like that, self destruct the new Star Times Uganda Premier League season is here. Ah! Straight into the back of the net. Fresh. Watch more live games featuring top signings and renewed rivalries. He literally has just vindicated his coach. Uganda's Ultimate Football League also returns to a whole new dedicated channel. Watch the Star Times Uganda Premier League on Sanyuka Prime. Brought to you by MTN, the official broadcast sponsor. The Ubora Awards are a prestigious recognition of individuals and brands who have made significant contributions to Uganda's digital space. We invite brands and individuals to collaborate with us and sponsor the event. To learn more about the available opportunities and how you can get involved, please contact us on plus 256-774-042-962 and nextcom.co.ug slash Ubora Awards. We are excited to collaborate with you. Nextcom, making digital work. and the flag stayed down for a moment everybody there thought he was offside he had his chance and he played it right at Simon Tamale the second shot Milton Kanisa broke there and when Zaga had it lined up the timely intervention there allows it to go out zone brought to you by 
MTN, the official broadcast sponsor. The new world we are living in is full of hassles and bustles. One needs to reflect back to his spirituality. Salam TV comes in right here, being your gateway to the world of Islam. Through its programming that is filled with inspiring, informing, entertaining, organic Islamic content. While still spearheading massive community projects to make a difference in the community. Salam TV, your television of peace. Welcome back, because this one is an interesting one. Welcome back. You're still watching The Morning Breeze, your most authoritative morning current affairs show. I, I want to say for women activists, eh? because I know it is a little bit emotional, but here is it. Um, there was a court ruling that came through in the media. This court ruling was uh, secured on 19th of this very month, 2023, by uh, Kanungu Grade 1 Magistrate uh, Mukovi Asanasio. And it was suit number 24, I want to be very clear, uh, and it was filed in 2022 by a one Richard Tumwine. Richard Tumwine filed this in, uh, in, um, in, in February of last year, 2022, against her ex-lover, Fortunate Charikunda, for breach of marriage promise. Now, this is what it is. Uh, Mr. Tumwine alleges, uh, did allege in the petition, that he met Charikunda uh, while he was doing his school practice um, and um, met Charikunda at a primary school uh, where she was also, uh, you know, doing some work. And then, uh, that was in around 2018, and they agreed, by the way, that they would get married. Agreed. Whichever way they agreed, God knows. So they agreed they were going to get married. But Tumwine was kind enough and said uh, he would pay for um, he would pay for Charikunda about a sum of about 9.4 approximately 9.4 to 10 million shillings for her to come and complete her bar course a diploma at the low development center which she did he paid the money Charikunda came uh, fortunate Charikunda came and uh, did her bar course and got done and they had agreed that in February they would uh, last year that they would actually 2022 after she was done, they would actually go ahead and um, get married, you know, become a couple, as they had agreed earlier on in 2018. Alas, after that bar course, Charikunda said, look here, Mr. Tumwine, I am not going to get married to you because I'm way below 35 and you're way above 65. Tumwine couldn't take it easily, actually. He went to court and seeking that Charikunda refunds his money for breach of a marriage promise. It is as funny, but as, as, as very emotional, as interesting, as serious as it can come. Let's just take you back. Trade Grade 1, Asanasio Mokobi, delivered the ruling following a successful application by the plaintiff, Richard Tumwine. According to the court documents, Tumwine, in 2015, while he was a teacher at Chiringa Primary School, met Chari Kunda, who had come to the same school for teaching practice. Eventually, they started a love relationship. Ultimately, the pair entered into a promise to marry in 2018, while at the same time, Tumwine committed to supporting the defendant's studies at the Law Development Center, an exercise that cost him $9.4 million. On 10th January 2022, the persons arranged for an introduction ceremony and a budget was drawn with the function slated for February 2022. The defendant later turned against the plaintiff, saying she cannot marry an old man, hence the suit. Consequently, a disappointed Tumwine ran to court seeking for reimbursement of the funds that he had spent prior to the failed relationship. According to the court, Charikunda was served with court processes but failed to file a defense to the suit, hence granting Tumwine an order to proceed with the suit. 
Some men and women we spoke to are in argument and say it's only fair for the time lost and the resources invested. What he did was an act of charity and I really appreciate that. But love, you can't force me to love somebody that I've been staying with you, so I can't do it. First of all, you gave him hope. He took over the role which was not supposed to be his. <clears throat> he paid his money. Like, Who said that this was an act of charity in any way? Because, you know, I was, I was looking at the constitution of Uganda and Article 126 too, just before we go to sport, I want to look for Article 126 too, which speaks about, you know, a remedy for whichever wrongs that are done. Here it is. Yes, Article 126 too, which speaks about administration of justice says, um, in adjudicating cases of both civil and criminal nature, the court shall subject to the law uh, and apply the following principles. Justice shall be done to all irrespective of their social and economic status. Justice shall not be delayed. Um, adequate compensation shall be awarded to victims of wrongs. Reconciliation between parties shall be promoted and substantive justice shall be administered without undue regard to technicalities. Now, in this case, someone is asking, did they make a physical, uh, you know, did they have a writing of you will marry me? Yes, I will get married to you. But you know, Tumwina is saying this was anguish. Looking at the time he wasted, he says, looking at the time he wasted and all the emotional, you know, power that he invested in Charikunda disappointed him and he could not take it. She should be able to pay her money. I know there's so many people out there. And I know Chisoka. If you choose to help in this life, and you've chosen that you're going to help with strings attached, you better have the, um, the faith that that string attached will be fulfilled at the end of the day. I know so many men who, I, I, this is raising a discussion about so many men who have paid school fees for their lovers, but unfortunately, um, their lovers end up disappointing them. Well, let the discussion continue on Facebook. Go to our comment section on Afro Mobile, go to Twitter. What do you think about this? And moving forward, what needs to be done? Let's get away from this discussion anyway. It is time for us to be talking about what's happening in the world of sport. If you're not going to get married to him, don't allow to eat his money or even go ahead and... Uh, Anyway, it is both annoying and interesting. Andrew Kabura, Brian Tuka, ready for the sport this morning to give us premier sport. Gentlemen, 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 I'm talking to you. <laughs> uh, did you enjoy your yesterday as we prepare for what should be a mouth-watering weekend? NBA sport uh, is going to be very busy as uh, we bring you the biggest uh, rugby game at club level this weekend. The Cobs are up against the Heathens. Uh, we have full details coming up on NBA Sport this morning. Plus, the Arsenal fans sit back. You're up against Manchester City later on tonight in the fourth round of the FA Cup. We have a full preview to that fixture and, of course, more stories as well. I'm Andrew Kabora and this is Premier Sport. Welcome aboard as we wrap up the week. I'm joined as always by Tuka Bryan for the analysis. Mbale Pool Club are champions of the 2022 National Pool League. Now, there is, this is after a 13-7 to score against the Capital Pub in a final fixture that was played yesterday at the Tickles and Gigos uh, with live action, of course, on NBA Sport. Uh, they started this season pretty well, uh, getting themselves in second position at the end of the first round, but started the second round very shaky with defeats away to Akanya and of course Kas Kansanga. Uh, we can also confirm that the magic moment uh, was the addition of Hazali Lukomwa and especially Sejemba Ibra inspiring them to a winning run of the last eight matches of the year including bonus points uh, victories against Tireka, Sinkers, Scrub Buyers, Club 408 and Nakawa Pool Rangers. Other winners of the day, the ladies league top scorer was Namuyanja Viki who had 27 frames and then of course you had the men's league top scorer Luburua Simon who had 57. Big action coming through from the National Pool League. I I'm so happy this is covered live by NBS. Sport. Yeah, you, and, and you may not have uh, a lot of interest in pool but one of the most fun games to watch is this. Yeah. When you see the accuracy in the hands of some of those ladies and the men, is absolutely brilliant. 
You watch people play pool in the bars and you're thinking, brilliant. But look at, for example, look at that shot, mm -hmm. the previous one that we've just watched. How on earth does he go past all the eight balls that he's yeah. able to pour the black? Brilliant. That was Bob Trubish, the president of the Uganda Pool Association, handing away the medals yesterday. Look, look at that, Andrew. Look at that for a shot. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at that. My goodness. Brilliant. Yeah. It's just more than a hobby, is yeah. it? It's been live on NBS Sport, and we do congratulate the Pool Association upon finishing the campaign. Let's talk a bit of rugby this morning, because every rugby fan is as excited as we are. The Nile Special Rugby Premiership returns tomorrow, 3 p.m., live on NBS Sport from the Legends Rugby Grounds as the Cubs will be up against the Heathens. The Heathens are looking to avoid a second defeat in three matches yeah. while the Cubs are looking for their third victory in as many games. That, I, 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 just imagine the sound of that, that Heathens are played three and lost two. I mean, nobody will be asking who the opposition was first. They'll be just saying, that's a terrible record for a defending champion who finished the entire season mm -hmm. uh, unbeaten. So this game, is more about heathens than the Cubs. Of course, Cubs wouldn't want to lose their, to the bitter rivals. They would want to do well. But boy, oh boy, how big is this for heathens? They have to win. Yeah. It feels like they just can't afford no margin for error. Well, we're excited this morning to have uh, special guests from both teams, uh, from Heathens. We shall be having Charles Uhuru joining us uh, for the analysis of his own side. And for the Cubs, Mark Osuna will be in studio to tell us how huge this game is suddenly for both sides. One thing that is quite, uh, you know, confirmed is that the game will be live on NBS Sport. Meanwhile, talking about a bit of cricket for you this morning, it was an excellent performance from Itanda Kayakas as they opened the men's edition of the Waterfalls T20 Elite League with a 10-wicket victory yesterday at the Gogo Cricket Oval over the CP Trekkers uh, with Igance Ni Teriganya uh, as the man of the match. In the second game, the Bujagali Rafters won by 60 runs against the CP Trekkers. Uh, Juma Miyaji uh, was man of the match in this as well. I passed by Lugogo yesterday mm -hmm. and you've got to love it. No, you've got to love it. I mean, when Davis was explaining all this that is happening, first of all, before you even watch the action, you must be proud of Ugandans who sit there and say, we need to produce a product for our sport. Mm -hmm. Not just an ordinary product, but a product worth being watched by the rest of Africa and the world if there is any interest. And you never know what could come out of this because this is a lot of exposure of our talent. A couple of players who are coming from here, you never know who they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they see an impressive player, I mean, the players could be going across the, 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 the continent to, to play some more cricket. It's, bri it's, it's brilliant uh, to see such a tournament here and some fantastic cricket just like this. Yeah, as uh, it is a Friday, we shall have full analysis of the tournament on Monday, which of course uh, uh, factors in the fact that it will wrap up on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, it's a fantastic one, and we do love it. T20, one of the more exciting, uh, you could say, versions of the game of cricket. All right, let's drop the cricket this morning and come back, talk a bit of uh, motorsport, because Byron Rugomoka can celebrate finally in his uh, first national rally title uh, a sport after the Sporting Commission decision uh, reviewing the 2022 National Rally Championship standings concluded uh, their findings. Now, Gomoka and the co-driver Hakim Mawanda's victory uh, was put on hold after the crew of Ponciano Rakataka and Paul Musazi requested for a review of the championship standings, alleging a breach of the regulations during round six of uh, the National Rally Championship in Kaliro. That was last November. Now, the crew alleged that Rugomoka, that is crew 58, and the crew of Jonas Kansimi, crew 44, did not take part in the event prize-giving ceremony, which was a breach of the competition regulations. But that has been thrown out of the window, and Byron can celebrate. Yeah, but again, uh, I think we saw a story, was it in the New Vision, or saying they've got to be a bit uh, more... Uh, what can I call it? More, maybe, let me just use the word meticulous in terms of how they handle some of these issues. Right. The championship was won or ended in November. For you to make a decision towards the end of January, I think is a bit unfair. Just imagine what Byron has been going through. Yeah. You're a champion, you know that. But you can't but celebrate. You, don't, you can't celebrate because yeah. you're not sure. I think so, these decisions like this have to be made as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's brilliant for him. He's, uh, he's quite a humble guy. And when you hear his story of, of uh, becoming a rally driver when we hosted him here, Brilliant. Yeah. And it's, uh, thank God for him that he's actually managed to be confirmed as a winner. All right, so this uh, is uh, live, of course, action from uh, Rugomoka's crucial victory. Uh, and like we can say, since November, uh, the champagne has been on ice. But finally, he can celebrate his first title at a national level. 
All right, let's quickly come back and talk Uganda to the world because this weekend is going to be a historic weekend for the ghetto kids. Mm -hmm. We have confirmation that they will be in France and they will be match mascots uh, as PSG takes on Reim on Sunday. Uh, should be a huge game in uh, the League One. Mm -hmm. And it is the Ugandan kids from Masaka yeah. that will be the mascots. Yeah, that, uh, that Luganda saying that the Tewevu Manga, mm. Tewevu Manga, well, is it or something like that? Yeah. These kids could have easily been on the street. They could have been homeless. They could have been like criminals. They call them, could have been criminals right. by now. They, they could have been torturing so many people. Look where they are in Pahari, where so many Ugandans who have money may not even be able to access the stadium or even get a visa to go there. That's what talent does. Yeah. Now, these ones are dancers. It could be football. It could be something. But what they have, they've met people who other people need to pay actually to meet. A yeah. guy like Rio Ferdinand, it's not every day you just find him on the streets. These kids have had an opportunity. What You've got to be happy for these yeah. kids. Absolutely brilliant for them. And, and I hope they enjoy each and every moment. Now, for you to be at PSG, we talk about you being the presence of Neymar, yeah. being the presence of Kylian Mbappe, Messi. My, oh my. It's a I, huge I, one. I would love to be a ghetto kid right now. I know. They yeah. have made it to France before <laughs> yeah. you, my friend. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's uh, drop that one and, of course, continue celebrating uh, our own youngsters. We do hope they raise our flag as high as they can in France as they face PSG uh, running out of that tunnel as mascots. Uh, let's talk a bit of Spanish football for you this morning because Real Madrid uh, beat City rivals Atletico after extra time uh, to advance to the semifinals of the Copa del Rey. Now, Atletico took the lead with Alvaro Morata scoring from close range following Molina's uh, low cross, uh, Real Madrid, where 11 minutes from going out, but equalized when Rodrigo beat the players and the